There are places that we travel to in our lives that make lasting impressions on all of us. There are few places, at least from an angling perspective, that leave such a mark as a visit to Slovenia. Famed for its marble trout and fishing, Slovenia has so much more to offer than that. It has culture, it has history, and the people are amongst the friendliest in Europe. Today though, I'm going to take you on a day's fishing, so sit back and enjoy the ride. I've had the pleasure of fishing in Slovenia four times previously. In the past I have come with a group of friends for a dedicated fishing trip. This time though I brought the family and I've managed to carve out today to make this video. We have based ourselves in the town of Bled, such a stunning place with lots to do right in the town itself, which is handy as it has allowed me to steal the car from the day and come fishing on the river Socha. So in years gone by when I've come to the Socha with a gang of pals, um, I've come fully armed to the teeth. I've usually got a dedicated nymphing rod, I've got a dedicated dry fly rod, and I've got a spare rod in case an unfortunate accident happens. It is quite difficult wading, there's lots of rocks and it can be very slippy, so a spare rod is always good. But on this occasion, due to the fact I'm on a family holiday, I'm very limited with kit. So what I have brought is the Drift XL from Witchwood. And what this allows me to do, it's a 9 foot 6 rod in its normal capacity and I'll use that for dry fly fishing and I've got a Witchwood RS2 reel with a double taper weight forward 3 line on and a tapered leader. Now what I'll do if I want to change the nymphing, all you do is you twist this, pull out and that'll extend your rod up to 10 foot 6. Now as regards to an indicator for nymphing, I use the coloured waxes and I'll stick a picture of that up in the corner there for you. It's a long way to come for a day's fishing and just take your chances buying a day ticket. I've taken the option of hiring a professional fly fishing guide in the guise of Euros Christian. I do hope I've pronounced his name correctly. He'll be along shortly to show me the ropes. So oh, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit of a joke on this. So I have a French group, they're similar age than I am. And this will be the things you will hear from me often. Like a... Oh, that's a decent fish. Yeah. Ooh, that's a trophy fish. <laughs> but there's something, there are a couple of glasses that are probably in production. Uh, there are a couple of, two things are missing. So there is like a trophy, decent and a solid one. Yeah. Solid fish. And then when the th things get a bit tricky, 
I go like we'll figure it out. <laughs> so we'll have a, we'll have a solid shot and we'll have a figure it out shot here in near future. But now you know this is just to please the fish guys. They're, they're, they're all solid fish to me. Of course. <laughs> so there we go. Thank you. Oh. Here's Cheers. a good day. Here's a good day. There we go. Nice. <laughs> and it's a marble trout. First cast. <laughs> I spent years and years trying to catch a marble trout. Sweet. <laughs> Stunning. Beautiful things, aren't they? Absolutely yeah. beautiful things. Whenever Me you're too. ready. fish find the most awkward spots to park up, can you see the marble trout? And I would do more left, not too much, just a couple of centimeters more to the left. This fish had situated itself in a back eddy on the far side of a fast run underneath an overhanging branch. The casting was extremely difficult and I opted for a bow and arrow cast with a small black dry fly to try and tempt the fish. That's it. Come on, baby. Ah, uh, now it pulled you out. Yeah, the pulled you out. Yeah. Grabbed it straight away, then. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it now. What are you? I'm getting, I'm getting behind it all the time, aren't I? Is its nose facing downstream now? She's facing downstream. That's why it's a back... After spending no small amount of time trying to tempt the fish, I eventually got it to come out and have a look. Unfortunately, I missed the take and decided to pass the task along to Euros to see if he could tempt the fish out with an imp. Grey and black and rusty, round rust. That's the, uh, usually the flies which are doing the trick here. I think she's not faced, she's still there, doing the same thing. Really? Yeah. She might even go for a dry fly again. I would have walked away for that after feeling her. Let me try something, let's see. I can see her right in the triangle of them tree branches. Yeah. Oh, she's coming. She did move. She did move on it. So, um, Euros and I have just been working our way downstream. The river's very busy, Euros. We've come across several other anglers, haven't we? We did. But we've managed to nip in at various areas and I think my third cast out of marble trout, I was over the moon. <laughs> but we found a fish in a really difficult lie, which um, we've both just had a go at. And uh, I think I pricked it. Euros went in with a nymph at the back of it, and it was still up for um, taking the fly. But it, it chased the nymph out, and Euros thinks it's done now. Um, they don't call me Spooky Simpson for nothing. <laughs> Although primarily we were looking for marble trout, there were plenty of rainbows to pique our interest. Sweet! Awesome!
I hooked a really solid fish just from the undercut of the large rock you see on the right of the screen. It was going well initially, but I soon lost control of the fight as the fish got below me and the worst happened. The rod tip snapped. Well that's me had uh, another rainbow there, a bit better than the last one I had, maybe two pound. Playing the fish, I was trying to stay downstream. Uh, the socha is really powerful and if you don't stay below the fish, if they get below you, it's over. So I was trying to stay below the fish, but I put too much pressure on the guide's rod and I've snapped the tip. Oh God, I feel terrible. But you know what, Euros took it like a man. He's away getting the spare tip section and he's going to bring me back a beer. The water we're fishing actually in years gone by when I've come before. This is water that me and my friends would just walk past. And Euros is just going to explain why you shouldn't walk past this water. A lot of people will disregard this water like they will just walk by it, not have a go of it. Um, the reason is like it just feels too tricky, it feels there's no fish in it. But you would be surprised, this is a perfect hiding ground for a marble trout. And you just need to take your time, take it slowly, and every stone, every back eddy, every undercut potentially can have a marble trout inside. So definitely have a go. <laughs> Sorry, have it. There she goes. Go! Go! Oh wow, we got her. Yeah. We got her. And this is what guiding's all about. You get well looked after yeah. and a free cup. Best thing to plan art. <laughs> awesome. Perfect. Towards the end of the day, we'd spotted a marble trout on the far side of the stream. It was soon bullied out of its lie by an even bigger marble trout. After some perseverance, we got the fish to take the fly.
sadly, it's come to the end of my time here on the River Sorcha with Euros. It's been an absolutely superb day. Now, I've been fishing for a long time and I learned some lessons today, so I thank you for that, Euros. Well, and uh, th so you might ask, what lessons did I learn? And the first one I learned was the fish are right under your feet. You know, people complain that there's no marble trout in the Sorcha, but what they're doing is they're walking over them mostly. We've caught fish under our feet most of the day, haven't we? Most of the day, yeah. The other thing I would say, and uh, I was dry fly fishing for a while, and I thought I'd pricked a fish, and I said to Euros, oh, I've pricked that. And he said, no, no, it's not pricked. It's had it in its mouth, and you pulled it out of its mouth, but it's not felt the hook. And I was a bit skeptical, <laughs> as you would be. And, uh, but we persevered with it, and we caught that fish, didn't we? We did, we did. Uh, yeah. Amazing, really, and uh, it's a lesson I'll take away from, with me for future fishing. So if you want to hire Euros for the day, where can people find out about your services? Uh, you can find me on an internet web page or Instagram, Facebook, so social media. Yeah, so and what I'll do is in the description below the video here, I'll post all them links uh, to Euros' various social platforms and uh, I can thoroughly recommend them. And <laughs> when we come back next year, I think I'm definitely going to look into having you for maybe a day or two. Awesome. Uh, but looking, be a... looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, mate. Yeah, you're welcome. There's been a lot of anglers on here today and we do fear that there's been a lot of pressure on yeah. the fish. Yeah. But due to perseverance, we've not walked past skinny water or water, broken water that looked unfishable. We've persevered changing weights, changing flies, yeah, yeah. And, and just making it work really. Yeah, true. And yeah. We, we ended up with a couple of good fish. We got some that. crackers <laughs> and uh, as you've seen, Euros caught some good fish as well. And uh, <laughs> I've really enjoyed your company. It's been a fantastic day, mate. It was a and pleasure. <laughs> I can thoroughly recommend getting a guide because I doubt very much that um, I would have turned up here for a day's fishing and caught many fish. Uh, there's been anglers step not more than five feet in front of us to fish, believe it or not. So it is a bit combat fishing, but <laughs> that's uh, the Socha. It's a victim of its own success. Sure. Thanks very much for watching the video, and I'll see you all in the next one.